Y'all ready to do some piping? Today we are talking about the pipe operator in the tidyverse in R. Maybe they have no idea what I'm talking about. What is a pipe? And that's totally cool. Let me first explain the problem and then the solution and then why it's super cool. Sound good? Sometimes data manipulation requires lots and lots of sequential operations. So for example, you might want to use the Avengers dataset to first filter to non-superheroes, then select kills, injuries, minutes fighting, north, south, and PTSD. Then you might want to compute kills per hour, and then you might want to summarize each variable for the north and south battlefield. And anyway, we got this long sequence of things that we want to do. Uh, now let's go to R and I will show you how we would traditionally do that. So traditionally, you might have two options. One is to create a bunch of throwaway objects. Um, so I'll start by loading Flexplot and Tidyverse. And so here I am filtering the Avengers dataset. So I'm looking at those without superpowers. And then what I'm going to do now that I filtered is now I want to select the variables. And I'm going to create a new data set called D2 to do that. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll create a new data set for uh, mutating called D3. And then a new data set called D4 that is equal to D3, but now I'm grouping by north south. Oops. And then finally, I'm at the point where I have created the thing that I wanted to do. Now, um, D, D2, D3, D4. All those are throwaway objects. I'm really only creating those temporarily just so I could do the next step. And I'm only creating that one so I could temporarily create it for the next step. And um, now you could, of course, uh, name all these D, uh, but I don't recommend that because you don't know which D you're on. And you might like, for example, uh, run the first two and forget to run the next two and then go down and then your data set that is named D You're looking back here and saying oh, I created everything except you didn't run it. And so it's easy to get confused. So um, So that's why I talk about throwaway objects is that you're creating a new data set for every change you're making to the data set So in some ways that's good practice so that you have uh, each unique data set uh, doing one thing and making one change and so you're not changing the original data set But the problem is you have all these throwaway objects that are just kind of cluttering R's memory and it makes it hard for you to keep the things straight Alternatively if you wanted to avoid creating these throwaway objects You can use nesting and as I say here I was really nervous about making this because it's really easy to confuse yourself so remember what I needed to do is I need to filter the data set, then I needed to select, then I needed to mutate, then I needed to group it, then I needed to summarize. You could accomplish all that without creating throwaway objects by making one massive statement where the very first operation that you're going to perform is on the very inside of all these parentheses. So first I'm gonna filter, and then I'm going to select and then I'm going to mutate. And basically the idea is, is because the first argument of filter is the data set. So you're including the data set. And likewise with filter, your first argument is the data set, but your first argument is whatever you did to filter to make that data set. And then your first argument of mutate is the data set, which in this case is that nested thing that you created. And so this right here doesn't create any throwaway objects, but it's really easy to get tripped up because look at all these open parentheses and it's really hard to keep things can, uh, straight. Like imagine if this was all one line and some people program like that. I don't know how they can do that. I have to create uh, white space to be able to figure out what's going on. But once you start looking like this, then it gets super confusing what you're doing. So. I wouldn't rec so th those are the two methods. One is we can create throwaway objects and two we can um, create nested functions. Neither of those are good solutions. Um, the first way clutters our memories and makes it likely will accidentally work with the wrong data set. The second is very prone to making a mistake, particularly since you have all these parentheses and you might not close the right one at the right time. There is a better way, and that is by using the pipe operator, which is uh, percent greater than sign percent. And so if you are on a Mac, you can, the shortcut to doing that is to hit control, I'm sorry, command shift M, and it will do that. Um, if you're into shortcuts, if you're on a PC, I believe it's control shift M. 
And so basically when you introduce that pipe, what it allows you to do is carry on an operation from one line to another without having to keep referencing your data set. Um, so it's better to show you than to tell you. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So here's an example of using the pipe. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the Avengers data set and then, and that's how you interpret the pipe symbol, just in your mind think, and then. So it specifies a sequence of operations. So take the Avengers data set and then filter it. But now superpower is equal to no. And then with that new data set, we're going to select and we're going to select the variable kills, injuries, minutes, fighting, north, south, PTSD. And then we're going to mutate it in this way. And then we're going to group it. And again, here's the and then. And then we're going to group it. And then we're going to summarize it. Now notice all along, actually, I'll go ahead and run that. And just to show you, it ends up doing the same thing. We still get a table that looks exactly like that the way that it was before. So we now have three different ways of creating the exact same thing. Um, but let's go ahead and take a closer look and, ex and see a little more closely what this operator is, this pipe operator is doing. So here's the old way. We create a data set called D, we filter it. And then now with that D data set, we create a new data set called D2, which is equal to D, but now we are selecting on it. So that's the old way. The new way is very, very similar. But the difference is, is that we start with D and then we take the pipe operator. And basically what the pipe operator is doing is it is sending the D information into the filter command. And notice before we had filter, we first specified the data set and then we did, oh, you know what? We don't need to do that. I messed that up, sorry. Avengers. We take the data set, Avengers, and then filter. And notice we used to have Avengers there, and now we don't have Avengers anymore because we are using the pipe operator. So what the pipe operator will do is it will automatically assume that all functions within the pipe operator, their first argument is whatever you are passing with the pipe operator. So I'm saying take the Avengers set and then pass it to the filter function and then take superpowers equals no, and then pass it to the select function. And again, the first argument would normally be the data set, but because I'm using the pipe operator, I don't have to do that. So with the pipe operator, we eliminate the first argument in a function. And then whatever we do put is gonna be the second argument instead of the first argument. So let me do a another example. Actually, I'm gonna build up to this example because that's a little more complicated. So I'm going to do a few of the examples from last time. Go ahead and copy that and paste up here. So uh, this first one, remember before how we filtered to say shots take, actually I ended up changing that to 100. Uh, we're going to look at shots taken uh, greater than 100 or minutes fighting is greater than 60. Uh, the new way of doing it is to say Avengers and then filter that based on this criteria. And I'm adding another pipe operator. So I'm saying, and then take that data set and then return just the head of it. And so once I do that, then it does exactly that. It gives me a new data set where shots taken are all greater than 100 or minutes fighting is greater than 60 and it's only returning the first uh, six rows. Uh, here's another example where I'm going to take the Avengers data set and then I'm going to arrange it based on injuries and then I'm gonna return head or the first six rows. And notice I've got injuries sorted so that the smallest are last. And just as before, we can go DESC if we want at the beginning to show descending. So those with the most injuries first. And here's another example. So we're gonna take the Avengers data set and then we're going to select that data set uh, to return minutes fighting in injuries. And then we're going to add the function and row. So this is just going to tell us the number of rows in this data set that we create, which ends up being 812. We could also go and call, um, which gives us two, which is exactly what we expect because we asked it to give us just two columns. So here's another example where we're taking Avengers and then we are filtering based on those who have superpowers, and then we are returning and row. 
So in that case, we have 32. So that tells us that um, in this particular battle, there were 32 superheroes fighting. So hopefully that gives you some intuition for how the pipe operator works. Now I'm going to do something a little more realistic uh, where we're gonna take the mindfulness data set and we're gonna perform a bunch of operations. So um, we're going to, in this one, I'm now, in a lot of these, I haven't assigned them an object. I could go like K equals that. And then the results of this operation is stored as K, which is just gonna be the number of uh, non-superheroes, so 32. Um, I haven't, just to show you what the uh, what the pipe operator is doing. But in this case, I do wanna create a new data set. So this is what you might do if you are manipulating your data to prepare it for analysis. You would say D equals, and then I might start with read.csv. So I'm gonna read in my data set, and then I'm going to filter the data set to include only those who are older than 18. And then I'm going to mutate my variables or I'm gonna create um, a mindfulness sum score, a stress sum score, and a depression sum score. And I'm gonna do it like I did in the last video. But remember when we use the select command, the first argument has to be the data set. Well, in this case, um, and for reasons that I'm not going to get into, um, the pipe isn't gonna work in here. So you have to explicitly specify it. And to explicitly specify a data set that has been piped. So at this point, we've got uh, uh, the data set has been filtered. And then now to pipe it directly into the select statement, I have to put a period. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the details about why I do a dot there, but not a dot there, uh, just because it's a little complicated. Um, this is more of an example, not that you have to understand every component of this, but I'm gonna read in the data set, I'm gonna filter it, I'm gonna create my sum scores, and then I'm going to select my sum scores as well as age and gender. And so that right there is going to create my data set. And then now that I have my data set, I can use Flexplot or do my analysis or whatever. And if I run that, you end up getting the plot here on the right. So um, with that, let me review our learning objectives. One is the two ways, the two old ways of doing things. Again, the old way we could either create a bunch of throwaway objects or we could create a bunch of nested functions. Neither of those is ideal. Both of those are easy to get confused um, and there's a much better way of doing it. Uh, number two, the advantage of the pipe operator. So the advantage of the pipe operator is you're not creating throwaway objects and it's very easy to follow the logic of uh, data manipulation. Number three, how to read code with the pipe operator. Basically, uh, be able to look at um, some R code with pipe statements and be able to interpret what it means. So read in the data set and then filter the data set and then mutate and then summarize or something like that. And then number four, know how to use the pipe operator with filter, select, mutate, arrange, summarize, etc., etc. So with that, I will see you next time. Peace out.